Welcome to Book of Acts Now, Global Ecclesia and School. We're glad you've joined us today. We're continuing our study in the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And why is that important? Well, because they're the basis of the Word of God. You see, both the Old and New Testament were spoken in Hebrew or Aramaic. Uh, we had the Greek manuscripts was all they could find for the New Testament. So they used those as a basis of study. But truly, if you want to know what Christ meant in the New Testament, when he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, you've got to go back into Hebrew because he wasn't speaking English and he wasn't speaking Greek either. He was speaking Amen. Hebrew. Amen. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, this letter, Yod. Uh, it's a work of the hand or deed. And so um, to be in awe of God uh, is made up of these letters. And so that's the Yod. This is the Resh, and this is, what is this? This is the Aleph, the first letter of the alphabet. Okay, so, now remember, you're reading from right to left. And, and so, if you're not reading from right to left, you're not in your right mind. So, let's take a look. What does this mean? Well, the work of the hand, the highest person or person. Um, and so, this can mean either father or strong. And so... To fear God, what does that mean? It's, uh, it has to do with the fear, fear the work of God. So when you look up in the sky at, at night and you see the Milky Way, come on, you see the stars and you see the planets, you should be in awe of God. Because that's the work of His hand. And so the idea to fear God is you see and understand the works of His hands and that causes you to fear Him and be in awe. It's not like we think of fear. It's more being in awe. Amen? Amen? Okay, so upright. It's made up also of three letters, including the Yod, which is our the featured letter today. And so uh, there's a little T down here, which is the A, the, uh, uh, the A valve. And then we have Shin. Looks like a W, doesn't it? It has a dot. That's the SH sound. And then we have, again, um, Resh, which is R. Okay, so uh, to be upright, this actually, Yashar, Ya, S H R, Yashar, this actually means prince, and it means the hand of the prince. If you want to live an upright life, get your eye on the prince and follow the prince, and when you follow the prince who is upright, you will become upright when you follow him. Amen. Okay, so Lord. Now, this is important. When you're looking in your Bible, uh, especially if you're looking at the King James, you will see sometimes when, when it says Lord, it's all capital letters, L-O-R-D. You know what that means? That, is, that means yod Hey vav Hey. Amen. And so what the Bible translators did is they took the Hebrew names and they gave them all a common name. So that's un unfortunate because it takes the meaning which is unique to each name. So if it's El Shaddai, which means Almighty God, they just translated it L-O-R-D. If it's Yahweh, which is the same thing as Yohid Vafe, they just translated it L-O-R-D. That's unfortunate because we lose the meaning of the name in translation. And they do have a different connotation or meaning. And so what does yod heh vav -Hey mean? Now, this is called a tetragram. Originally, there was no valves. It's only consonants. And so if you know the meaning of the word pictures, because all of these letters have word pictures, then you know what God's name means and, and what it looks like. So the Yod, the Hey, the Vav. Now, whatever the Hey, which is this, here, it looks, like, it looks like an N with part of the side missing, right? So, it, if it's in the middle of the word, it means God's heart. Okay, this is Vav, which means nail or attach. And then hey at the end of the word means to declare. So, here's the mystery, guys. The, there is a mystery in God's name. It has a meaning. You know, uh, it used to be, especially in the Bible times, when a mother gave a name to a child... She gave a name that represented um, what she felt that child was like. 
So if you were horrible bir at birth, uh, or a lot of pain, you might get a name that meant pain. So the names meant something. So what does this name mean? Well, the work of his heart is to declare the nail. That's the gospel in God's name. Amen. This means work. This means heart. This means nail. This means to declare. God's name, you see, they didn't have the cross then, but they had the instrument of crucifixion, which was what? The nail. The nail. And so, God's name in the Old Testament is looking forward to the crucifixion of His Son. No wonder it says in John 3.16. What's God's priority when He announces Himself to man in John 3.16? For God the Father so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son on Calvary, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's God's priority. Would you expect His name would reflect that? Of course. The work of his heart is to declare the nail so you see it. And then you can, because you understand the Hebrew concept, when Paul says, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me, for I am crucified with him. That's a Hebrew concept. You know, people walk around, I'm a New Testament Christian. Listen, when Paul was preaching, they didn't have a New Testament. He was preaching the application of the prophetic in the Old Testament and declaring it fulfilled in Christ. Amen. Listen, his very name contains the gospel. Looking forward to the crucifixion of the nail in his name. Amen. And now in the New Testament era, we look back to Calvary where this was applied in his hands and in his feet, and he was crucified for you and me. So the, the right idea of relating to the Old and New Testament is this. The Old Testament is, is receiving fulfillment in types and symbols and prophecies in the New Testament. The New Testament is looking back, built on the foundation of the Old Testament. You can't throw it out because you feel like, oh, the New Testament replaced it. No! The New Testament did not replace the old. No. It brought a fuller application Amen. so we can more fully see what God predicted would come. Amen. I might preach on that. Okay, so establish. Establish, what does that mean? So you have the Yod. This is the A sound. And this is the S sound. And uh, <clears throat> to, to support, right? And, and so this is the Dalit, which is uh, the door. And remember, the door is where covenant and the blood was applied. So wherever you see this, you know it's talking about covenant. And so to be established, the work that supports the covenant or foundation. Listen, unless you're standing on the foundation of God's covenant, you are not going to be on a solid foundation. That's why Christ said... You know, the foolish man built his, ha his house on the sand. But the wise man built his house on the rock because the rock on God's covenant is the foundation that establishes everything in God's kingdom. And if you're not secure in God's covenant, born again because you believed in his sacrifice and, and because he has given you a new heart, written his law in your heart and mind and made you a new creation, that's how you get a new foundation. Amen. And you are in covenant now. You're not free to go out and sin. You're not free to go out and just live any way you want. No. If you're a new creation, you are in covenant with God. And that covenant says, I'm going to follow him and make him Lord and Savior in my life. And his word becomes my blueprint. His life becomes my en encouragement and example. I live for Christ who died for me. When you do that, you're on a firm foundation. And if you're not there, you're on sinking sand. Listen, I'm just telling it like it is. This is what the Bible is teaching. Now, I'm not wearing... Um, usually I have a symbol that I'm wearing. It has a yod and a hay. And, uh, and so, when it, in Israel it means life. It's kai is how you pronounce it. So you put the symbol of, uh, of the yod together... With the hay, yes. yod, and so what does it mean? 
The work of his hand inside of my secret place is life. What life looks like. And, and so, I don't know if they know this in Israel. But they're walking around wearing this. That's my kai. That means life. Well, it means more than that. It means you've given your heart to the Messiah. Amen. And his, the work of his hand is at work in your heart. Yeah. And you're experiencing new life because you've given him access yeah. to your heart. Which we're going to talk about today in the sermon. And because he has access to your inner chamber, your heart. You become new in every way. That's what life looks like. Hi. Amen. Father, we ask that you bless us as we conclude our teaching today. We're in awe of you and fear you, Lord, because we see your greatest works. And not only in the heavens, the greatest works of the whole universe is your son hanging on a cross on Calvary. And we want to be upright because we follow the prince and his example and his ways. And we declare that the work of your heart is to be our heart. That we're crucified with Christ. Amen. And we're established on the foundation of your covenant. And Lord, we have a new life. Thank you for blessing us today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God.